Uh, hi everyone, I'm Van. Um, I am a software engineer and I work at a company called Wonderbly. So I've been working with React for about a year now, so I've probably done what most of you guys have done and I've done like uh, tutorials and I wrote a to-do list, um, but it wasn't like useful or very inspiring. Um, and then I joined the company and they showed me code like this and I was like, what's going on here? Um, so the most like, the only familiar part really was this like button and some prop types. Um, and then I saw this stuff like enhanced bear, which confused the hell out of me. I was like, why do bears need to be enhanced? This is very strange. Um, and then one of my colleagues kind of sat me down and explained it and walked through it. So that's why I'm here today, because I wanted to kind of share my knowledge. Um, so in order to look at higher order components, um, we need to kind of go over some basic terminology for functional programming. Um, so, the f okay, so functional programming is the process of building software by composing pure functions. Um, so a pure function is something like this. Um, this is a really simple one. It adds two numbers together. Um, any number that you pass into it, um, it's, you'll always get a, the expected result. There's nothing that can change. It's really easy to test because you just get the two numbers. Um, it doesn't rely on anything outside of the function. Um, and this is great. Um, this is an example of an impure function. So you've got x where I've introduced um, shared state. So someone could come along and change the value of x. Um, and then if someone else tried to use the bad sum function, they wouldn't really understand what's going to come out of it. Um, impure function. OK, so the next thing is a higher order function. Um, quite simply, it's a function that expects a function as an argument, and then it returns a new function. Um, and I'll go over this a bit further in the next part. OK, so I'm going to talk about higher order components now. In a similar way to higher order functions, um, it will take in a component and return a slightly different component. Um, high order functions and high order components are pure functions. Again, no side effects, no mutations, um, and so on. Uh, so that's the, um, that's the definition of a high order function. You can see it's not very different from high order component. Um, so I like to use this analogy um, for a high order component that's a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. So if you think of the cocoon as a high order component, you have a caterpillar that kind of goes into it, does some transformations, and comes out as a butterfly. It's the same thing, but slightly different and kind of supercharged. Um, and that's how I see high, or high order components. Um, so this is an example of a really basic um, high order component. Um, you can see it's a function. It takes in a component and then it wraps it in a new component um, and then renders the original component. It adds some stuff, list of bears, because the component needs a list of bears. Um, okay, so in summary, um, higher order components are pure functions. Um, it means you can clean up a component and take out um, all the handlers, um, any lifecycle methods and stuff, um, separate them out so that you have a pure presentational, uh, presentational component. Um, it's a lot easier to read. Um, and then if you have a bunch of higher order components, you can reuse them and wrap multiple components with them elsewhere in your code. Um, so we're going to take a step back into functional programming just to cover one last thing. Um, function composition, and it's the act of putting two functions together to form a third function, where the output of one function is the input of another. Um, the more I look at this sentence, the more confusing it gets. Um, so hopefully this will clear it up a little bit. So I've got two basic functions, one that triples a number, another function that will round that up to the nearest whole digit. Um, and then the third function is like a mishmash of the two together, and that's um, composition. It's just uh, multiple functions chained together. Um, yeah. uh, 
So to recap, pure functions are predictable. They don't allow for any side effects. Um, they don't mutate any data elsewhere. Um, there's no shared state. A high order function is a pure function that returns another function. A high order component is a type of high order function that returns a component instead of a function. Um, and composition is the act of merging them all together. Um, OK, so we use a library um, at Wonderbly called Recompose, which um, makes chaining up of high order components really nice. This is an example of not using Recompose. So you can see it's a bit uh, confusing. There's loads of like nested uh, function calls. And if you're going to wrap more higher order components on it, it's just going to look horrible and messy. Um, so this is what Recompose does. So you've got a Compose function. And now you can list all your higher order components in order. Um, it makes sense. Um, it's readable. Someone else can jump in on the project and know what's going to go on. Um, so then we go back to the original code where I was really confused. And now we can break it down. So you've got your connect, which is your Redux store, if you use it. Um, with tracking is our own higher order component. With handlers is part of recompose that uh, adds in a bunch of functions. And then map translations is our own. So now we can see um, what each of the things is doing. Um, and you wrap it around the original function, and then that's that. Um, so Recompose also has a bunch of other utility functions. So we've got with props, where you can pass extra data to your original component. Um, with state and with handlers work together. Um, with state allows you to uh, have internal state for your component rather than global state using the Redux store. Um, handlers are like what happens when you click a button. Um, but it means you can take all of this out of your component um, and separate the concerns. Branch is another good one. Um, so the first argument it takes is an expression that evaluates to either like true or false. And then depending if it's true, um, it will show the original component. No, it will show uh, a loading spinner. If it's false, it will show the original component. So this is a really useful one for conditional loading of, rent, um, of components. Uh, life cycle methods. I mentioned earlier that you can pull out life cycle methods from your React component. Um, this is really nice for just cleaning up your code and taking out the bloat from your components. Um, and then this is an example of them all chained together. Um, again, it's pretty simple to see what, uh, what's going on. Um, you've got Redux, you've got with router, which is React router that handles all the routing. Um, with props, you're adding in extra props. With state, adding in internal state. Um, and then the component that it's wrapped around has access to everything here as like props dot is visible, props dot set is visible, and so on. Um, OK. Um, so I'm going to go through some examples of how we use higher order components at Wonderbly. Um, this is a pretty simple one. So you can log what a component has as props. Um, this is really good for debugging, um, especially if you've got some weird behavior somewhere. Um, so it takes in a component, and then it does the logging of the props, and then it returns the same component. Um, cleaning up props is a useful one. So a component might have loads and loads of props coming into it. Um, and you might want to clear it up because uh, it's, it, it's just cleaner to read. Um, component doesn't get too confused as to what's happening. Um, we've, we can use higher order components to um, create like reusable sets of data. Um, so if you find you've got a component that needs the same shape of props quite often, you can uh, abstract that and use it multiple times in multiple areas. Um, and if you're going to do that, you can export this, uh, the prop type's shape as well. Um, so you don't have to declare this for multiple components. Uh, we can use it for Google Analytics. So if you've got event tracking on like button clicks, you can uh, separate that as a concern and like um, 
just have a Google Analytics higher order component. Um, you can use it for internationalization. So we use a service called OneSky that holds a bunch of keys like bears.button.cta and then we pass it a language and then the service OneSky will give us the translated string in that particular language. Um, you can use a higher order component to map the key with the string uh, and then pass it to the component. Uh, you can use it to create metadata. So with Router, we'll tell you what path you're on, um, and then you can use that to generate, I don't know, your hreflangs or your canonical links and so on. Um, and then finally, you can use um, high order components to fetch from an API. This is technically not a pure function because it does some stuff and it's, you know, creates some side effects, but um, it might be useful. Um, so you can fetch from an API endpoint and then render a certain component if it's successful. If it fails, you can render an error message. If it's pending, you can render a loading spinner, for example. Um, yeah, so that's how we use higher order components at Wonderly. Um, that's actually the end of the talk. I think I went through that a lot faster than I was meant to. Um, but if you've got any questions, I will hang around for a little bit, um, or you can tweet me. Thank you.